I'm, yeah. I'm curious if you could talk to me about the role of, you know, leadership, or maybe talk to me about your role in kind of fostering that environment of high culture, high performance. Yeah. We talked a little bit about what it looks like. What are the things that you actually do, um, especially in a remote world where it's like, you can't just go up to the rooftop and have a beer or, you know, yeah. catch somebody in between calls and, and check in on them. Yeah. Um, one thing I will say that I have to my advantage is I have hired some of the same folks over and over and over again. And there is, for me, that luxury of knowing these individuals, um, how we sell together, uh, how they like to be managed. So we sort of have that going for us. Um, but for the new folks that I hire, I really, truly believe it begins with credibility. And so it's never mattered what role I've been, whether I've been a frontline leader or I've been leading lead leaders or owning a business unit. I am never far away from the deal. And I'm never too good to be in a deal strategy, strategy session. I am never too high. I'm not an ivory tower leader. Like I will get in there. I'll do disco calls with you. I mean, most recently I've, uh, for the first time I'm owning SDR and I've been working with this team on pitch and objection handling and hooks and their cadences and adding steps and things that I have never done before. Um, but I am in the trenches with them. So I'm trying to build that credibility that, you know, I'm not too good to do the job alongside of them and I will do the, the job alongside of them. Um, I think the second piece that is just ultimately so, so important is allowing space to give your team to fail fast and fail forward. I've worked for leaders that accept zero mistakes that are condescending uh, that don't have a place for failure or learnings. And for me, being able to not always provide the right answers, of course, I don't always have the right answers. Like, you know, newsflash leaders don't have all the answers and we don't have to, uh, <laughs> right? But I, I remind my team of that often. I don't have all the answers, guys. Um, but I do allow space to fail forward. Um, and to look back and learn. And I think what you mean by fa failing forward? Yeah. I mean, I don't consider anything specifically in sales a failure. Even a closed loss deal is a learning opportunity. So what do you take from that? And how do you fail forward, right? Instead of getting too low in the low of losing a deal and we lost revenue. Okay, well, let's Let's pick ourselves back up, dust our shoulders off. What did we learn? How are we going to push forward? How are we going to do things differently? That's different than someone just failing at a job because they're not competent or they're not putting forth the energy and effort. Like failing forward comes with a high performing team because especially for us um, in a company that is creating a category, we are out there testing things all the time. And if we didn't have space to be able to fail forward, you know, no one would want to do this job. Um, and so I think that's that's really important. I think the other thing that goes hand in hand with failing forward is enablement, constant enablement, product enablement, pitch enablement, skill enablement. Um, some of the folks that have worked for me for the last eight years, I mean, we are still figuring out ways to learn and do things better and to strategize. And so um, enablement is a key part of building that high performance and high cultural team because they have a safe space to ask questions. And they feel more apt to share with their colleagues and teammates instead of creating this sort of unnecessary internal conflict. I like healthy competition, but not at the expense of collaboration. Um, and I think, you know, lastly, it's like celebrate the wins, even the little ones, right? Like SDR is getting a call, like booking a meeting. I will celebrate that like we just closed a million dollar deal. It is hard out there. All of these jobs are incredibly difficult and it is so important to not forget to celebrate the wins, um, especially in a re remote environment. We actually have a channel in Slack um, that is specific for like lighting people up and like calling out good deeds and like we call it bright lights, um, but it, it's a great opportunity in a remote environment to celebrate and, you know, catch people doing things great and making sure they feel recognized and seen, um, which all adds to high performing culture. Nice. We have a shout outs channel 
but we also have a sassy replies channel and that's probably my favorite yes oh my gosh i love that what's the sassiest reply you've seen like what's the best thing that's been in there um i mean one that happened to me was i was on a sales call and the guy was um local entrepreneur and he's like colin i appreciate you know that all you know jared uses you and all these people use you he's like i just don't think cold email works and i was like my friend i'm not gonna say his name i was like i know for a fact that i have um headed you off through three different customers in the last year he's like no way like pull up pull it up and like sure enough i'd book three meetings off of this individual um that was my that was my like ex- okay. i was on that was an ae but like on that <laughs> a sales call i think the the most aggressive one we got was the guy took a picture of himself holding a bat and was like that's all he re- it was just like him holding like a baseball bat and like that was the that was the reply i love it <laughs> yeah. that's pretty sassy <laughs> it's very sassy and, but I think it just allows you to like make light of something that can be like uh, a hard or a, a, a threatening moment. You know, if you're an SDR and you get a crappy email like that, like it's a shitty thing to do to somebody. It's it uh, the the least we can do is laugh at it. It is. It is. And like for anyone out there listening, if you get a cold call, like what is the point in being an asshole? I mean, you literally can just say, sorry, not interested right now. I mean, we've had, we we could go down a very dark rabbit hole here which we won't but yeah i'll just leave it at the psa no one needs to be a jerk just say you're not interested that's all (laughs) literally cost you less energy to be like just neutral about it yeah yeah that's it guys yeah there's one person who i who's a, a prominent part of the entrepreneur community in the area that i live in and i called up bounded to him once and he ripped me a new one for reaching out to him over linkedin like, how dare you? This is my professional network, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, this, this person has forever colored himself in my, in my eyes. Like I'll never be able to think positively of him because of this one interaction that he probably has no idea about. Yeah, and it's like, but also does he know how LinkedIn works? Uh, yeah. It's like, <laughs> dude, we're connected. I'm in your professional network. There's right. an inbox in here for a reason. It's called an in-mail. That's yeah. what it's there for. Anyway, it's just straight up a message. (laughs) (laughs) 